Tobias Harris. Yep. A lot of people have talked about, and I don't understand it, how they felt he was overpaid at 26 million a year, two years, 52 million. And what I was trying to explain to everybody, and I will do it again, and then I'll let you elaborate because I'm sure you got some points on him. Yes. You didn't just pay him for on-court production. The example you just mentioned about how with Asar Thompson, he pulled him to the side, hey, AT, come shoot with me. Mm -hmm. Asar said they didn't have that last year. You're paying for that leadership. You're paying for that mentorship. Yes. That goes into the 26 million a year. It's not just, now if that wasn't, a, if that wasn't there, if it was just based off a of skill and he was a third, fourth year player, maybe you pay him 22 million a year. Right. But when you have the intangibles that he can bring to the table and when that's lacking so much from your previous roster, bro, we're not Boston. We're not Dallas. Right. Exactly. We're not the Lakers even. No. We were the worst team last year. So you just off of that, you got to pay a little bit more. 100%. You paid a guy that wanted to be here. Like his wife is here. He has history here. He talked about, you know, the Stan Van Gundy days. I think he's a perfect piece for it. Like granted, we don't know what his usage is going to be like in an ideal world. Kate is your leading scorer, Ivy's your number two, and maybe Tobias comes after that. So yeah. I think he's in a perfect position where he gives enough versatility as a scorer to be able to create his own shot on his own, which is something that they've lacked tremendously in the front yep. court. Um, somebody who can play catch and shoot basketball as well from any point on the floor. Mm -hmm. um, I just think he gives you something different. And what the hell are people talking about overpay for two years? Two years for $52 million? That's not a lot of money. And it's not even, I'm not going to talk about like where, you know, the future could lead with that deal or how, if he's here, but yeah. the point is for two years, <laughs> a guy that's in his 14th season, you're not relying on him to be the guy. Like that's just yep. not how it's going to be. He's yep. supposed to complement the foundation and help them be better. And I think his skill set shows that perfectly. So whether it's Cade finding him for open looks, whether it's Ivy finding him for open looks, Asar or Duran, whoever it is, mm -hmm. his job is to help the young guys grow and that's what he spoke to a lot of what he said was how he's helping the rookies how he's yep. helping uh bobby somebody who's he's uh, who bobby said what he's even compared to which i thought was pretty funny but yeah just yeah. that connection that he's already translating i mean we even saw him hanging out with the pistons during summer league when he when he signed here so yep. yeah I, i'm very encouraged by his presence i think he's a great fit and i think it made a lot of sense and it's for damn sure not an overpay in any way absolutely sense. not and for anybody who's wondering, yes, he is an upgrade over Boyan Bogdanovich. Yes, yes. he is. <laughs> <laughs> I had some people asking me, is he better? Yeah, he's better. Yes, he's not the best defender in the world, but he's much better defender than Boyan ever was. Him and, get that straight. him and Fontecchio. Having the collaboration yeah. of those two is yeah. easily an upgrade. Like, they're dope. They're both, without question, better on offense and defense. To easily. Boyan. So let's get to some sound bites from him. He said, we got a lot to prove and a lot to change to get that respect back on our name. So he's coming in with a chip on his shoulder. Um, he also said, it's a nostalgic feeling being here and seeing how the city has been built up. Downtown is amazing to see and knowing that more growth is needed and will be done. The city is primed for a success story and I'm really excited to get to work. I mean, I love this guy, bro. I, I was sad to see him go. I, I'm a Blake Griffin fan, but I did not like that trade. No, I did not I, like I that trade. Either. Yeah, that broke my heart. I remember like talking up because I remember that core. And I, they were good. Like I really liked Marcus Morris. I loved the Reggie Jackson, Andre Drummond tandem. Yes, you know, lobs with. I'm like, if they could just find that one small forward or that one four that just that that meshes in perfect. And what KCP? He was the other uh, back mm -hmm. with Reggie. And then mm -hmm. out of nowhere, that's a bias trade happened, and I thought, you got it. This is yeah. it. This is it. Yeah. And I thought it was gonna be the move. I thought it was gonna be great, but. Unfortunately, they were all kind of premature in their development with some things, and yeah. SVG didn't really do a lot of favors. I remember he played Tobias off the bench for a while. Like It was a lot of things that just didn't work out that made sense, but he was still encouraged enough to still want to come back and be here. He saw yeah. where they were building. He had great conversations with Trajan Langdon, um, mm -hmm. and he has a lot of respect for J.B. Bickerstaff as mm -hmm. well. Um, mm -hmm. they, both, they both openly said Cade and Tobias we're looking at as the leaders of this team. Jalen Dern as well. So right. he seems like he's stepping into that role. He's very, very um active in making sure that everybody is, you know, putting in the work yeah. as prepared as they can be. Something else he talked about a lot that I think was super important because we can talk about X's and O's all day. We can talk about the basketball all day. He even talked about just the mental aspect of growing as men. 
saving your money, traveling right, mm -hmm. eating right, the things like that, those intangible things that kind of get swept under the rug a little bit because we only see them as athletes. Exactly. He cares about them as growing young men. And I think exactly. that is super important and shows how invested he truly is with this franchise. You hit that on the head, bro. And it just goes back to the intangibles. You mentioned the pick and roll offense with Reggie Jackson, and IJ Drummond. This team kind of reminds me of that team, if you think about it. If you got the pick and roll with Reggie Jackson and Andre, you got Cade and you got JD. You got an athletic two guard and KCP and you got JI. You got an interchangeable three and four, Marcus Morris and Tobias. And now you have possibly Fontecchio and Tobias, right? right. Especially now with Stu saying he's going to play more five this season. He's not going to be the four. So I see a lot of similarities, but I think this young group is better. Like Reggie was good. Oh, um, yeah. And we thought oh, yeah. he was going to be, you know, kind of a sheer fit, but he had a lot of injuries that he dealt with. He was a bit undersized, wasn't the most consistent shooter. And it was just a lot of other things that he had to work on. Um, yeah, in terms for of sure. Becoming the guy, especially when he was replacing Brandon Jennings at the time, too, who was coming off an of injury. So I definitely see what you're saying. There's definitely some similarities. This team is better for sure. De yeah, but, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, the, the, yeah. And they're younger, too. They're younger. They're a little right. more polished. And I think things make a lot more sense based on the, the dynamic that they have. I'm right. very excited to see how they gel together. A few more things on Tobias. His brother with the school here, he has roots here too, you know, and he said he wanted to be here. And the biggest thing for me, he said, he said, you look on paper and you, you may think one thing about this team, but he said, sitting down with Trajan and Cade, Cade's mental at the time and where he wants to be as a player made me realize this is moving in the right direction. Mm -hmm. How many times have we heard players who came here say that? At what point do we stop saying bro. this is just PR stunts? Right. And this is just truly how these people feel about like, come on, y'all. At some point, you gotta really just say, okay, he's this guy said it, this guy said it. like this is just who this guy is. And I think it gets overlooked because once again, circumstantially, this team was not good. Right. And when you're not good, nobody cares. Having that encouragement fed to your players means a lot too. But the great part about it is, like you said, it's not just window service. Kate is actually as good as people right. say. It's not like <laughs> we're waiting for like it's not like kate is you know shooting 30 percent and you know averaging like under 15 14 points like oh he'll put it together no right he's seen it and he's telling him now bro you can be as good as anybody in the league and we all know that already so mm -hmm. getting that reassurance from a veteran showing it by putting you know pen to paper to be here shows so much i think that means a lot for real i really do. yeah yeah and it's gonna be great just to have that veteran to push kate you know what yeah. I mean? Like he said, Tobias said, you know, he told him, you know, he has to take that big step into turning himself into one of the best guards in the NBA. He told him that. Mm -hmm. So just having somebody there to kind of push him like that and to not let him get relaxed and to keep growing is exactly what a young franchise player needs, you know? 100%. And he's got it now. I'm on my way up and I'm not gonna stop. We headed straight to the top in the low. I got a face set. I got no time to wait.